Hi guys! So welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you my testimony. So I'm just going to jump right in. So I have always grown up in a Christian home. My dad's a pastor, so I went to Sunday school. I've always like learned all the Bible stories and the verses and have a relationship with God. You have to have the heart knowledge. You have to have a relationship with God. And I remember being so like convicted and I was like, wait a minute, I don't even have a relationship with God. I know the answers, but like, I don't have a relationship. So I wasn't really sure how to like go about it. And so I just kind of went on with my life. And a year or a few months later, me and my friend would like walk down to my church. We live pretty close to it and we would just walk there for fun. I don't know why, I couldn't answer it. <laughs> and we were there one day and we were actually playing with hula hoops in the church basement. And I just had this feeling and I was like, we need to go pray upstairs at the altar. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what? And I was scared to ask my friend because we had never done something like that. Like, that's just not what we did when we hung out. But I was like, hey, like, Raya, can we go upstairs and pray at the altar? And she was like, sure. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so we went up and um, I put on some Christian music. And we both separately prayed at the altar. And that's when I really experienced God on my own for the first time. And I realized that I knew that I was supposed to have a relationship, but I hadn't done it yet. So I prayed that God would like strengthen me. I surrendered all. I remember that was the biggest thing I prayed that day was like, God, I'm laying everything down. Like I surrender myself for your glory. Like I want you to use me. So I remember going home and I was like on fire for God. Like I was telling people, I was texting my friends, Jesus loves you and stuff. And I was just so on fire. And then I started to like drift a few months later. And then I would go to camp and I'd be on fire for God. And I was like, yes, like this is awesome. God is so good. And he would teach me things. And I'd come home and I'd be like, I'm going to read my Bible every single day. And that lasted like a week. And I would drift from God. And I'm not going to say I like wasn't a Christian those times, but I was floating. Like I was barely floating, hanging on to being a Christian because I just, I didn't know how. And like, I wasn't really putting the effort that I should have into it. So I started to get more equipped as I went to more camps and as I learned from church and started reading on my own. And I finally kind of realized like, okay, I gotta, I gotta put some effort in this. Like I need to read my Bible more. I need to listen to Christian music more. I need to pay attention and take notes in church because I just go to church because I have to. I need to go to church and actually hear what the preacher, my dad is saying. So I started to get better, but then fast forward to 10th grade year. I'm homeschooled. I went to a small Christian Christian school from kindergarten to sixth grade and then was homeschooled seventh through ninth. And then 10th grade, we decided to put us kids like in PA cyber. Oh my goodness. Like if you're in like a cyber school, like PA cyber, like good job. Like I'm proud of you because it's hard. And it wasn't just hard like because... I just was used to being homeschooled. Like I had gone to public or private school. So like I knew a normal load of work and I was literally doing more work than my public school friends. So I was just constantly doing school. And I remember it just started leading me down this like really dark path. And I wasn't spending time with God and I got depressed. And it was really, really hard for that entire year, it was just bad. Like I was not okay, I was doing things I shouldn't, I was walking away from God, but lying to everyone and trying to act like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, like, and I was only using my head knowledge. There was no heart knowledge there. 
I remember people would like ask me for advice, like spiritual advice, and I would like give them the Sunday school answer. And I was like, yeah, I'll pray for you. But I wasn't praying for them. And I was trying to serve God and the world. And you can't do that. It just does not work. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. So I remember it was getting closer to camp time. I was slowly becoming happier, less depressed. Um, and it was summer, I was happier because of summer. Good weather always helps that kind of thing for me personally. And I remember almost not even wanting to go to camp because I knew God would speak to me and I knew I couldn't avoid him at camp. Like that, you can't do that at camp. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm gonna go because I love camp. I love my friends, like this will be fun. I'm gonna go to camp, of course, obviously. So I went to camp and Monday I'm like in the service, I'm like singing the songs and feeling really convicted, but I was like, no, it's fine. Like I'm fine, like nothing's wrong. I'm a Christian, whatever. Tuesday, same thing. My heart is so hardened at this point. I built up so many walls because I was serving myself in this world that there was just so many walls built up. So finally Wednesday, third day in, um, comes along and I'm in service and I like broke down in tears. I went to the altar and I prayed and I was like, okay, God, you got my attention. Like I, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I've been lying to myself. I've been lying to my family. I've been lying to my friends. I'm a hypocrite. Like I've been telling everyone I'm this Christian when I'm just like not okay. And I'm like, I'm trying to serve you and myself and it's not working. I want to serve you. I'm done serving myself. I'm done being selfish. And that whole week was phenomenal. Like the amount of teaching God did in my life to me in only one week was crazy. And God equipped me with all these things to be able to go home and continue this walk with God. And I talked to people and I created the altar and I surrendered once again. I surrendered everything in my life. And once I did that, I was no longer depressed. Any ounce of it that was left was like gone. And God blessed me for so many things, like silly things that I was scared of letting go of. God replaced with something much better in my life. And I met new people and new Christian friends. And it was just amazing. Like, the way God worked on that week was insane. Going back real quick to the time I was depressed, I remember I would go to bed at night and I could not sleep. Like, my anxiety was too high. I was not happy. I was miserable. I just I wasn't on my phone. I would just lay there and, like, stare at the ceiling and like until like such late hours like three o'clock sometimes four o'clock sometimes like I just could not sleep no matter how hard I tried and a thought every single night came into my head that if I die tonight I wouldn't go to heaven and yet I still like didn't surrender for so long it just it's like it gives me such compassion for people who are like that and who know that if they died right this second they wouldn't be going to heaven because that's scary and it is scary and it should be scary because hell is real and it's not a place you want to go so i always like i don't tell like everyone like i was depressed because i don't think i was like suicidal depressed but I definitely was not okay and as crazy as this sounds I would never take that year of my life away because I think God is going to use that and I can now relate to people who are going to through similar circumstances as I did and be like you know it's okay like I am living proof that you can get out of that and that you God can save you from that he can save you from that horrible depression and that feeling alone, God can pull you out of that. And I'm so thankful for that year of my life because I learned so much from that. 
and I'm even stronger today. One of the questions um, someone asked me when I asked a, asked my Instagram to ask me questions was, how did you become the Christian you are today? Like how, how did you get where you are? And this is why. This is my testimony and it was hard and it's been a long time coming, but I'm just so thankful where I'm at today and I want this not to scare you, but if you're where I was at that year, that then you need to make things right because I promise you it gets better. I'm not promising you that depression's going to go away and that you're never going to feel sad again. Because I still have my months, my weeks, my days, my hours, my minutes of horrible sadness. Like, it's still going to happen. But it will get better. And there, there is joy in the morning. The best is yet to come. And God promised us that in the Bible. And it might not be here on this earth. You might wait until heaven or when God comes back or when you pass away. It might be in heaven. But the best is yet to come. It's just so important to keep pushing through and living this life and do not serve the world. Do not be a part of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, like the Bible says, and do not conform to this world. Be set apart. Live your life for God. Don't go with the flow. Go against the flow. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my testimony. Um, I hope this encourages you. And again, if you ever need prayer or questions, please DM me on Instagram. I answer everyone who DMs me as best as possible. So please feel free to do that. All right. So that's my testimony. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Um, feel free to follow my Instagram. I'll put it down below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.